So we're going to try to segue all those things into that regarding the school. Um, uh, you know, they knew what fraternities you were in. I mean, definitely it was, wasn't an easy decision. Uh, it's like a certain you know, type I sat down with my dad. Not to say I hope I make it, but to know I'll make it. Welcome to another episode of I Am The Change Podcast, brought to you by DTR Incorporated, a nonprofit organization geared toward uplifting, inspiring, and empowering communities all over the world. I'm your host, Michael Davis, alongside Ms. Sharice Lovett, Mr. Jason Redman. How y'all doing? Hey, what's going on today, sir? Not too much, man. I'm back. Missed a couple of so, you know. Yeah. We're happy to have you back. Yeah. You took his sabbatical. Glad to be back. I appreciate it. He was, he was on all right, though? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I guess we could call it that. Yeah, yeah. So, look, man, I went, I, I had to go get one of my heavy hitters, man, and, and pull out something special since you came back. Uh, I went, called one of my homeboys from uh, Knoxville College, uh, Wayne County's favorite son, Terry E. Sims, Coach Terry Sims. So, uh, uh, I'm, the one thing about Terry is when we met, uh, he was the first person. I met when I got to Knoxville College and uh, we met the weight room. Um, we actually took a psychology class together. And that's when we, I realized we both wanted to join the same fraternity. And we were in class we were, and we were talking about it. We obviously, we weren't paying attention. But, um, and then that's when, that's when we found out. And lo, and lo and behold, we both played the same year. So uh, it's, my, it's my man. Uh, have a lot of funny stories I ain't gonna tell. Uh, but you know, we got a lot of funny stories, but he, well, uh, what he number are you, sir? Terry? Yes. On the line. Terry was five. Number five. five. Yeah. Terry okay. was five. Stan was six. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So him and him and Stan stood next to each other. Um, but when we graduated, when he, Terry graduated first, he went, he went to go, uh, he went to be a GA at, at Louisville, right, Terry? Yes, sir. He went to be a GA in Louisville, and that's I, I felt like that's where your coaching career started. Yeah, well, the uh, the first year was uh, at Knoxville College. I, I worked in the admissions office the first year and helped out a little bit then. And after that year passed, then I went to University of Louisville and uh, GA there for two years, uh, coaching the secondary, and moved on from there and, and went to Austin P. and I coached running backs there for three years. Left Austin P and went to Texas Southern. Uh, I was at Texas Southern four years, coaching the secondary and special teams. Left Prairie View, went to, uh, I mean, left Texas Southern, went to Prairie View for a year, uh, coaching the secondary and special teams. I left Prairie View, went to the University of Louisiana Lafayette. Uh, mm -hmm. I was there for two years, coaching the secondary. Left there, went to Howard as special teams coordinator, uh, secondary coach left Howard after three seasons and came to Bethune-Cookman. I was the assistant head coach, special teams coordinator and safeties coach here for five years. And I'm um, going into my eighth year now as the head coach here. The interview is open. You hear that resume? <laughs> yeah, my dog, my dog, my dog, he been all over. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I have to, I, sometimes I have to write it down because I start forgetting it's been a long 26 years. 26 years coaching. How did you adjust to all that moving? It, it's it's a lifestyle. I mean, it, it's all coaches. It's either you, you, you're you up for the task or find something else to do. So the adjustment's okay. not really hard because I'm a people person. I like people. I like new things. I like seeing new places. Mm -hmm. uh, and the one thing that coaching has afforded me is uh, the opportunity that I've actually been to every state in the United States, including including Wyoming and North Dakota, South Dakota, all those places that people don't ever really visit. Uh, why'd so you, why'd you go to Wyoming? It, it has brought to me. Huh? Why'd you go to Wyoming? Recruiting? We, we played University of Wyoming oh. when, I, when I was at Louisville. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Makes sense. Yeah, you know, like football game. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it, I get it now. I, I thought y'all went to Wyoming like for vacation, the big sky country, so I should, I didn't know. No. <laughs> no. Was it nice? Is Wyoming nice? Uh no. It it's very rural. Oh, okay. A lot of elk and other huge animals just walking around. It's mm. no, no. Not really at all. Okay. All right. How was North Dakota? So did you always know you wanted to be a coach? Uh after I let the, the dream of playing go, yeah. 
I knew I wanted to stay around the game. Um, actually worked uh, at, at Knoxville College for a year in the admissions office. Uh, I, I was a counselor for a little while, but it really just didn't feel right. So I, I knew I wanted to be back close to the game of football and, you know, coaching gave me the opportunity to do that. And, and it get, also gave me an opportunity to help young men and young women move on and, and move forward in their life. So when you said you let the dream go, at what point did you realize that playing the sport was no longer an option? Want, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to be a realist. Mm -hmm. And some guys don't, you know, some guys will try out and they'll work out for, you know, 10 years. I, I knew after that second year was over and uh, all the working out and, and you know, the, the, the pain was not it for me. Uh, mm -hmm. So I had to face reality. So it was just a, a little bit of having to mature and, okay. and understand that uh, there was a window that, that was open for me uh, to move into coaching. And I had to take that opportunity while it was there uh, or I could have, you know, continued to try to work out and go somewhere. But I probably wouldn't be talking to you guys right now. I'd probably be somewhere getting ready for work or, or just getting home from work. <laughs> gotcha. Doc, did you ever think about going back to Wayne County to coach? A uh, couple times, but you know, it, it, it's it's kind of hard. I, I honestly have not lived in Wayne County since you know I was 18 years old. Once I graduated from college, uh, obviously I went back when my parents were still living. I went back and uh, visited a few times. You know, I always go home. I still go home and visit. But uh, coaching a while back before I you know, started moving up in the profession. It was a, a thought to go back home. I actually interviewed there twice. Uh, didn't get the job. I was told actually that I was overqualified, uh, you know, but it, it's a little bit different place. So, um, so where's Wayne County? That. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it, it's Southeast Georgia. Yeah. Oh, okay. Down near That's Savannah. Good. Oh, okay. Yeah, down, yeah. down that way. So, um, and now that I'm getting older, it's still, you know, a thought in the back of my mind because uh, I don't know how many more years I'll be doing this college football thing because, you know, kids are getting, they're, they're different. And you mm -hmm. see it every year. You see the change every year. Uh, so I used to say I was going to coach until I couldn't walk anymore, but I don't know that, that you know, it's getting closer and closer now. Mm -hmm. So I may have another 15 in me, but uh, I don't another know. 15 years? I mean, you know, it maybe I'm still young, man. I'm I'm 51, so you know. right. You're very you're you're very young, very young, handsome man, Terry. Yeah, remember remember we we used to think 50 was like you, you oh, bro, die in a minute. Yeah, you know, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> now that you're on it, you're like, hey, 60's not really old, you know, because nah, you're close. Nah. Yeah, no, no, no. Hey, so since you brought up coaching, man, and you, you talk, you, you know, young is a different. So you guys are you guys have moved from the MEAC to the SWAC. Tell me about that transition and, mm -hmm. and, and how was that for y'all? I know, I know the travel budget was a lot different. Honestly, the, the travel budget was, was similar uh, to the MEAC. And the, the, the funny thing is about that, playing the, the SWAC, when we were in the MEAC, we played a SWAC school every year. Mm -hmm. uh, we were 9-0 against the SWAC since I've been here, you know, since, uh, you know, moving, well, leaving, still being in the MEAC. Uh, but we moved to the SWAC this past year, had a lot of guys opt out because of COVID, uh, you know, our quarterback being one. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had a couple of guys that were really good athletes, just maybe not ready yet. Mm -hmm. uh, had a lot of close games in this league. Uh, there are a lot of good football teams, a lot of good coaches in this league. Um, and I think, you know, we we're – up for the challenge this year. We, we know what we, we have to do. Mm -hmm. We know what to expect. Uh, it's a great, great football league, great league to be in. Know a lot of the guys in this league. Just excited to be a part of it. Dig it. Doc, so I, I'm, I hate to have the interview, but I, I'll be asking. Oh, no, that. it's fine. Yeah. So I'm just going to, I'm going to a football game. Right, That's right, right. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> yeah. You got to tell us what which game y'all want to go to. Hey, I'm going to tell you right now. On that subject, when you go to when you go to Bethune, like 
Coach Sims is like it's it's God, family, Coach Sims in, in, in Daytona Beach. Like, them people love Terry Sims in Daytona Beach. Like, hey man, I'm a great American, bro. I I, I don't doubt it. I'm just saying, like, you go to Daytona, like, hey, that man could probably be mayor and give him give him about three more years if he want to run for mayor. He got go. it. Oh my gosh, man, they love Terry Sims. They absolutely love Terry Sims in Daytona Beach. Any any and everything he want to get. But I ain't mad at him because I got to, I was benefited to get a couple of things. So I'm, I'm happy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I told you, I'm making and that drive across the state. Hey man, I'm just saying, you, you go, you're going to have a great time. He, he's a, he's a great host. Hey, so <clears throat> like coaching in the swipe right now. So which, like they, they talk about a lot of coaches, but you don't never really hear them talk about Bethune a lot, man. How does that like, does that give you like a drive to like to, to, to come out and like to beat the, beat the Jackson States, the Alcorn States? Just to show them that, hey, man, y'all play a good brand of football in, in, in Daytona Beach? We beat all corners this year. Y'all beat all corners this year? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, I mean, it, it, it's football. <laughs> when, when you line up, you 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 line up every every Thursday or every Saturday, mm-hmm. and you're going to have to play the game. Uh, don't really bother me. I, I've, I've been mentioned a lot, a lot of different places, some for good things, some for bad things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not really that guy. The words about being talked about or people mentioning me, uh, my body of work speaks for itself. And that's who I am. That's who I've always been. And that's who my team is. We, we don't worry about the, the social media presence. I understand mm-hmm. that's where life is these days. And mm-hmm. we have people on our staff that do that, but it's never a sore spot or a sore subject for us to even talk about when we know people are not discussing us week in and week out. Because if you ask any football team that played us this year, they know they were in a football game. Uh, and, and that's that's what we rather be, um, you know, mentioned for mm-hmm. that and, and looked at as a, a, you know, a great football team, a team that you're going to know you played a football game mm-hmm. rather than all the fanfare or, or, you know, anything that that you can or you have to count on the fans for. Uh, we understand who fans are and we understand what they're for. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd rather be respected. At any day than just you know a uh, subject in the barbershop. I'm I'm good with just somebody respecting my my game and my body of work, and that's the way my players are, are taught, and that's the way they're they're that's the way they prepare week in and week out. Mm-hmm. So what's the what's the um so which game are you looking forward to most this like season? This yeah. season? Yeah. Uh, Miami, the first one. Uh, you you know me better than you know me. I, I'm, I'm always looking forward to the next game. Uh, I don't ever build any game to be um, larger than the other. Mm-hmm. Uh, every game is important. And, and when people ask me, well, you know, what's the next game or the, the, the game you're looking uh, forward to the most, it's the next one. Uh, because any opportunity I, I have to coach my guys, to watch them play this game, then that's what I'm there for. Uh, Love coaching the game, love matching wits with other coaches. So anytime we have that opportunity, that, that's what we're looking for. Dig it. Dig wow. it. Wow. Oh. So I got like Jason, a two-part question. So okay. Oh no, go ahead. No, I was gonna tell <clears throat> well, Jason to let, let you guys ask some questions and, and <laughs> let, he need to listen some. Yeah, you're trying to hog the Not mic. Jason. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can I ask a question though? What's the, what's the what's the red background and the maroon background? Is is it a story behind that? Well, well, the story the for me, it's the same logo, but the color oh, is... Oh, I know the logos are the same. Oh, yeah. The, I went to... Um, I'm a proud graduate of North Carolina Central University. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, but it's fine. No problem. No, it, I mean... <laughs> but I, now, we started I'm this interview. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I, I, I had to say it. Yeah. I'm joking. Yeah. I'm joking. I... I no. Been, been, been to Durham a lot. Uh, had a lo- whole lot of great wins in Durham. Um, so Durham is a good place for me. I was almost the head coach there. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't going to tell you. So you'd be t- politicking around town. Hey, bro. <laughs> hey, man, look, I was ready. I was ready. I was going straight to the chancellor's office. Like, hey, man, I got a good one for you. Get, this is the guy you need. Well, the chancellor, the chancellor came from Bethune Cookie. I know. Yeah. 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 And I was gonna tell the I was gonna tell the AD, like, hey, you need to hire my man. But you ain't so calling what's, what's the story with the red? Oh, um, uh, you know, this is just I just like red, so you know, I just I put the background on it. 
and then um and then they requested their personal backgrounds as well so we you know just mix up the colors for them yeah yeah jason's of course you should have made him do it himself bro that i'd have never had it <laughs> I, do, I do all mine then you just see me putting those up when you were talking to me so i'm not a tech person i put my i put the back and put the background up if you send me the pitch like you did the logo you send me the picture, I can put it up. But to design that, mm -mm, mm -mm. that's not me. I know my yeah. limitations. Yeah, and, and technology is it. I don't, I don't do technology. Yeah, that's why. Like, I don't have a ring camp, the ring light like Sharice got. Mm -mm. I ain't got all that stuff. Yeah. So no. That's it's not, it's we just, get you you plug it light. in, and you turn it on. Yeah, man. That's yeah. it. No, no. It's all right, Jason. Yeah. That's not so, Michael. Oh. I know you had a question. I got a question after you. All right, bet, bet, bet. That's a two-part question, though. That's, That's you know fine. I'm patient. Well, I mean, really, I can. But um, you talk about looking forward to that first game of the season against Miami. Um, do you or your team feel a lot of pressure going against another Florida team? You know what I'm saying? I'm sure the atmosphere is crazy. Is it a little different for them or you? No. Uh, it, it's, it's funny. Anytime we play any school uh, in the state of Florida, and FIU won't play us again. We beat them twice, so they won't <laughs> play us again. Uh, but anytime we play FAU, Central Florida, any of these teams in Florida, our guys are always up for those games. They're up for any game, but they're really up for those games because they play with a lot of these guys in high school. So, okay. you know, have an opportunity to go and play against your old teammates. And a lot of them feel like they may be, you know, better athletes than some of those guys that got that opportunity. So it's not really um, something that, that they over prepare for. I think they're they go into it just like any other game. We prepare for every game the same. We don't put any more emphasis on the game. Uh, you know, when we play Miami, than we do if we're playing, you know, Pine Bluff or whoever. Doesn't matter to us. Or if we're playing Central, doesn't matter. We we prepare the same way. <laughs> well, you answered my second question, so that's yeah, yeah, that's solid, that's solid. Yeah. What, what was your second question? I answered well, I, Pre prepare I answer different for the game. Come on, you got to keep up with it. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't hear you. Um, well, just preparing for the games. And oh, uh, okay. I was going to just ask about preparing for the games and having uh, the players keep their composure, uh, depending on who they face. But he said they, he tra they train the same uh, for everybody. You know what I'm saying? The same mindset for everybody. So answer that question for me. I missed the, I missed the question. My bad. Sorry. I was intent listening. No, he he didn't ask it. I just answered I didn't get to it. ask it because he oh, answered okay. it. Okay, that's why I said I thought I, I I thought I might have missed it. You know, I thought I was not oh, nah. nah. listening so hard. Yeah, <laughs> <Not> bad. <laughs> oh my God, Jason's crazy. So when okay, so before the interview started, we were talking about the your your children, and so I tried to guess how many uh, players you had on the team, and I was off by a lot. But mm -hmm. how I know with all the other coaches, do you individually know all 112 of your players? No, all of them and their parents. That's amazing. Hey, that's great. Yeah, but yeah, Michael, it's 112. I guess 70. And I was, he was like 70. Yeah. <laughs> that's just a travel squad. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you manage all 112 players? You have, and to, be very, you have to be very organized. Like, obviously. Very obviously. detailed. Dang, that's a lot. I mean, that's a lot of. I'm sure you got, you got to be kind of crazy too to, to, to be doing all this, but I wouldn't want to be doing. I wouldn't want to do anything else. Yeah, this this kind of stuff. This 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 head coaching thing fits you. Yeah, yeah. You you you. you yeah, I'm a little very, different. Very much so. Very much so. Yeah. So hey, so like the nickname, Mister Wonderful Man. That kind of that kind of fits now. <laughs> yeah, that really kind of. Hey. Yeah. And I know you don't like it. I know you don't I like can't, it. I can't curse on this thing, so we're going. Yes, you yeah, can, but where did it come from? You can. We okay. curse we, We're not going. That, that's a, that's a, that's a that's, that's one story we're going to leave where it is. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's one of them, that's, one of them, that's one of them stories, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You got to remember, we've been together for like 30, almost for like 30 years, so. Right. Yeah. yeah. Gosh. I know, right? And then, so like when you, so when you look back to like 1992, did you, can you, would you ever thought that you would be a head coach of a of a of a FCS school in Florida. No, uh, and, and Hayes and I sit around and talk about that all the time. Like, man, you believe like just two knuckleheads 
that we used to be, we sitting in here now, you know, where we are. Right. Uh, and it, it's sometimes I, I still sit back and it takes me, you know, it takes me back a little bit just to know where I, where I came from, you know, mm-hmm. the, the obstacles that I, I've had to overcome, uh, the ups and downs I've had in my career. Uh, and, and, you know, I try to share things with younger coaches because it's one thing true about football coaches. Uh, there are those that have been fired and those that are waiting to be fired. Uh, it's happened to me twice. And, you know, the first time I didn't know really what to do. I was fired on my birthday the first time. Oh, man. Which was, man. oh, I still have the letter with, with my birthday on it, telling me, that, you know, <laughs> I appreciate everything that I've done. My services are no longer needed. Mm. On your birthday. So, oh, yeah. On Damn. my birthday. And, you know, and the second time, still waiting on the guy to tell me why. And, and that's this business. You know, you, mm-hmm. you never can pinpoint reasons for a lot of things. Uh, but I've had some great moments. I, I've had an opportunity to, you know, I, I have six championship rings, uh, you know, in my career. And, and that's something that a lot of guys can't say. Mm-hmm. So uh, I have had some ups, like I said, and I've had some downs. But uh, all in all, I think I've had a good career. I've had an opportunity to uh, help a lot of young people on the way, help a lot of young coaches on the way. Uh, and, you know, hope you continue to do that for, uh, like I said, next 10, 15 years. And after that, I'm going to let somebody else have it. And I'm going to sit down somewhere and find me a boat hmm. and, and, and relax. You going to go fishing? We're going freshwater yeah. or saltwater fishing. See, I'm a country boy. I go fishing. Give me water. Okay. You know, I, I mean, I, I know I can change my, my, my rods and my bait and all that yeah. stuff, but just give me the water. I don't prefer one over the other because I've fished in ponds in my grandmother's backyard and I fished in the ocean. So it doesn't matter. Mm, mm. I got you. Hey, so- yeah, ocean, ocean fishing is intense. It is. And, and, you know, you, you come down here, you know, they cheat a little bit in Florida. They have the the, the uh, little monitors that show you where the schools of fish are, but uh, we, we have we have caught some some huge fish in Florida. Hey, why you never invite me to go fishing, man? For they what? say he does with you when he wants to. No, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, he's right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's how you treat me, man. Yeah. Hey. I just check. J- Jason's used to that with all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, are, we we all just like he's he's always gonna be the little brother. Yeah, yeah. Considering I'm like we're damn near the same age, but it's all right. It's okay. <laughs> it's yeah. all right. Yeah. No, so I what um area of the country has been your favorite? I don't want to say like which team did you enjoy working with most, but like what area of the country have you enjoyed coaching in most? Oh. Texas. And I say that because everyone had me so afraid to go to Texas. When I, Man, you're going to starve out there. You're going to, it costs so much money to live out there. And it was nowhere close to that. Mm-hmm. Texas is probably the, the, one of the most inexpensive places that I have lived. Let me tell you, uh, Florida's you expensive. Old, huh? I said living out here in Florida is expensive. It, it, it is, it is. And, and in Texas, you get a lot more house, a lot more everything for your money. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, D.C. was crazy living in. Oh, yeah. Uh, I forgot. The, yeah, I mean, I'm, I was at Howard for three years. D.C. was nuts. That was a different place. Uh, very expensive. A uh, lot of culture had a, had a good time living up there, but I would only want to go back up that way to visit. Gotcha. Uh, you know, and if I had to be up there to work, if I had no no job, totally different. But I I think I I'll stay in the south or the southwest and let it be that. No big sky country for you, huh? No, not not unless I have to. Now I I can adapt to any environment, so it doesn't really matter where I go. But if I had a choice, mm-hmm. I'm staying south or southwest. Gotcha. No hey, more so- snow for me. So when uh, when Doc Thompson uh, when he retired, did you think about stepping into the role of AD? No. So you can't, uh, you can't I, do that I, I AD and a head coach, huh? Well, I just think when when that time comes, if it comes, then that's what I'll do. 
Um, not something I, I wanted to just jump into. So um, no, nah, it, it really didn't hit hit my brain to, to jump after that. I had a few people around here saying the same thing. Uh, just wasn't something that I was interested in in that at that time. Because mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I got my, I have my hands full with this football team. So gotcha. uh, I had to have to make sure that's right first before I take on any more tasks. I can dig it. I can dig it. You, um, hey, so what's it like working with your, with your line brother, man, working with Hayes? So do you, I'm, did you ever ask who Probably Hayes? like it would be working with you. I mean, so no, I, I assumed that when he was referencing this person, that it yeah. was some type of, yeah. We, we all went to school together. So the, Hayes is the, he's the second day coach. He, he, he uh, we all went to, we all went to school together. We all played, played football together, played us together. So we all have, we have a, a funny joke that Terry going to fire him one day, but uh, we all, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's been close a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> so how you going to fire your line, brother, man? Business is business. Call him I in and people- tell him, Hey man, I got to let you go. Bro, That's real easy. It's easy for me. <laughs> Firing folks is easy for you. Yeah. You it sounds like it. That just rolled out too easy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey yeah. listen, man. I, I'm I'm a I'm a big chance guy. I'm a I'm a fourth and fifth chance guy. But once you get there with me, oh, it's oh. real easy for me to bring you in and say, hey, look, I, we're gonna move in a different direction. I need your keys, your computer, I need you to sign this form, uh, have your office cleaned out by five tomorrow. I'm gonna give but you a whole day and a half. You get it, hey. get it done. Just don't do it on their birthday. Hey, yeah. I would never do that to anybody. <laughs> that was that was bad. Nah, that, that was bad. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you develop? Because you seem like you got a strong mindset. How did you develop the mindset to bounce back from getting fired on your birthday? And for, you said fired a second time as well, right? And just oh, yeah. stay keep pushing on to success. You know what I'm saying? And being a position. I, I right have now. never been a, a a guy that was allowed to quit, and and I have a. Like, a, a, I guess it's a funny story. My family dynamic is, is crazy. My closest sibling that I was uh, close to in age was my sister and she was 15 years older than me. So I, and I actually have my oldest brother, his oldest daughter is a year older than me. Mm. And oh, wow. then I have my next to the oldest brother and uh, his oldest son is a year younger than me. And then my sister, her daughter is five years younger than me. So we all grew up like sisters and brothers. I grew up with three of my nephews and one of my nieces. I was their big brother because my parents raised them. So, you know, I was kind of, I've been kind of screwed up my whole life. I still, I was still getting beat up by my older brothers. Uh, but I was my niece and my three nephews. I was there older brother mm-hmm. so I, I have I've had to have like a different mindset my whole life uh people have told me a long time I had an old soul I was always that guy when it was about to be something stupid go on let's think about this now don't get me wrong I, I've done my share uh I have my share of dirt and crazy stories but I always ha- have tried to be the the voice of reason and I guess that's because I grew up around so many older people. Uh, and I guess that's where my strong mindset comes from. I just don't believe in people telling me no. If you tell me no twice, I'm going to ask you one more time to, to, to see. That's just where I've always been. And I don't believe that there is anything that I cannot do. So you played, uh, you played baseball in high school. And ran track. And, but they all have it. They have it in the same season. Yep, I was a good athlete. I was a very good athlete. You should know that. Uh, but <laughs> I love it. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Who was your position? What position you played in baseball? Where, where do you want me to play? I played everywhere in the outfield. And I played second base. I played third. Oh, okay. And I was a catcher until I got that tooth knocked out, and I I wouldn't go back there anymore. Hey. You ain't had no math yeah. down in Wayne County? Hey, man. All right. Okay. Jason, so yeah. as a baseball coach, <laughs> yes. would you have utilized him in all those positions? Uh, he would no. have, because I was I was a great athlete. He would have <laughs> done it. Because I could hit, I could run, and I could play all those positions. 
And if you got somebody that can play third base, you're going to put them there. So the funny story is that how he, how he acts right now is how he acted, is how he acted when we met. So he's always been the same person. Like he doesn't, he hasn't changed. Oh, that's good. Consistency, consistency is key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, like, Michael, when you were asking, like, how does he get to that, that mindset of being the strong, this is how he's always been. Like, he, he, he has a, a growth mindset. Man, it he is. has, he don't sugarcoat much. Like, he doesn't chew his words. I, no, I rather, I rather tell you the truth now and hurt your feelings now rather than lie to you and hurt you later on. Yeah. I live by that. Yeah. Some yeah, people like me for it. Some people hate me for it. It's okay. I will lay down tonight and get plenty of sleep and not worry about it. Yeah. This and how, life will go on. <clears throat> this is how, how it's always been. Like, it ain't no... Hey, man, you know, we said it before on the podcast, man, but a lot of amazing people come out of Knoxville. Listen! Like, this is crazy, man. When Jason, Jason told me who we bag, were... Man. Yes. When Jason told me who we were interviewing, you know, and I was like, this college is not that big. Not. <laughs> but it's but powerful. It's heavy hitters coming from yeah. Knoxville. I'm powerful. talking about amazing. You know why? Because we, you, you know, the old saying, old people say, you don't have a pot to pour piss in. We really didn't. Mm -hmm. We had, we had to survive. That's why I don't, I don't see like bad days when people say, oh, something's a problem. Oh, this is another day. It's an issue. We'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. We'll figure it out. Because we had a lot of days where we had, we had to figure out a whole lot. Yeah, and, you know, right. It, it was just, it, it was another day. So I don't, I don't look at things as being problems or, or things that I can't overcome. You know, it's just something that we have to get through. This too shall pass. Mm. I've heard that. Michael, I told, you, I told you, we're going to Knoxville College for homecoming one year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got to. We, we have to show year. up because this, this is... year, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, we're going. Yeah. He's probably not going to be there. He's gonna be, he'll, he'll be coaching, but... Yeah. We, have, we have several hundred other people to choose from. <laughs> yeah. Se several, several hundred other powerful people. Right. Yeah. Like so Jason's, mindset. Yeah. Jason's bag yeah. has not disappointed us yet. <laughs> Ever. I, yeah. Ever. I want to bring carry on earlier, man, because but he uh it was a scheduling issue, but he uh like so I had we had we had bone on, we had stand on, and uh I forgot somebody else we had on too. And, uh, You've had a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we had Eric Carter on too, and so so you and Eric, yeah, and, and he looked, he looked, he looked sixty. I told him with that all that gray hair. <laughs> yeah, we played together in high school and college. So did Eric come out? Eric graduated before you, after before you. No, we graduated together. Eric I just went to Albany Albany State my freshman year. He went to Knoxville. Gotcha. Then I transferred up there. Gotcha. So why'd you leave? Why did why did you leave Albany State? Funny story. I was, it's funny now. I was kicked <laughs> out of the county. Damn, I didn't know that. Hey. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, little, little, you know, <laughs> uh, I don't know, all y'all, Jason remembers, y'all other two might be too young to remember this. Uh, you know, in the restaurants, they used to have these rails that separated, you had to go like weave in and out to, to go order your food. We were standing there, me and a couple other guys that, that played and just looking at the menu. And uh, some guys of the other race walked in and they saw us not ordering yet. So they just walked up to the counter and ordered. Well, it was a receiver that we played with. He was from New York. Of course, I'm not gonna say everything he said, but he had a whole lot of choice words. He followed one of them outside when they walked out with their food. He hit one of them. Oh. Guy hit him back. It was a big fight. Of course, we had to go help. Right. And they used to line the flower beds with these red bricks back in the day. He picked up one of the bricks and hit one of them boys in the head with it. Oh. Before we knew it, it was like eight police cars pulled up and all this. Trust me. I didn't know what was going to happen in my life then because all I think is we're going to prison. I don't know if this boy did or what's going on. He ended up being fine, but they arrested us. One of the coaches came down to get us. He said he was calling our parents. I said, leave me here. 
Because <laughs> I knew what was going to happen. And my, my dad told me back then, he said, if I got to come get you out of jail, I'm going to punch you square in the face first. And I believed him. So we weren't going to really, we weren't going to do that. We, we were going to just leave me there. And, and I'll take my chances. But he, he got us out and we went and saw the judge and he banned us from Darty County. Dang. Yeah. True story. To this uh, day. I, I, I received day. probably 15 years ago, I received a letter telling me that it was okay for me to come back to Darty okay. County. Mm, okay. So you not feel your, your next choice or are there some other options? Yeah, how did you find out about Knoxville? That's the question I like to ask yeah. people because I never heard of it until I met Jason. Listen, it, it's crazy. My One of my high school coaches, he, he was my high school track coach. He actually played with my older brother. He was coaching at the time. He, was, he coached at the University of Tennessee for a minute. He was coaching at Austin East. Mm. And he got to know a lot of the coaches over at, in, at Knoxville College. And he took probably five guys up there before me. And then he, when he found out I had to go, you know, I had to find another school, he said, well, you're going to Knoxville. Because where I'm from, that's the kind of stuff that happens. You, don't, you didn't really get a whole lot of choices, and I messed up my first choice. So <laughs> he said, it's where you're going. And I was like, Knoxville? He loaded like four of us up in the car and drove us to Knoxville, Tennessee. <laughs> and I, we pulled up on campus, and I said, man, what in the world? <laughs> But I thank God for Knoxville College because I had to grow up. Because mm -hmm. I, I had I was nine hours away from home, and myself and three other guys from my hometown, the first weekend we were there, we tried to drive home. <laughs> By the time we got home and kicked it a little bit, it was late already Friday night. You have a little fun Saturday. It's time to get up and, and drive back. So needless to say, we didn't try that again. But Knoxville made me grow up. It, it, it makes you mature fast. Um, met a lot of lifelong friends there. A lot of people who helped me through a lot of struggles. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you have um, people there that you probably wouldn't even think twice about helping if, if they needed help because we all have a special bond. Mm -hmm. And with, with being there and, and, you know, going through the things that we have gone through and it's one thing about folks from Knoxville College. We'll tell you, we'll talk about each other with each other, but you can't talk about it. Yeah. You can't talk about nobody. You, and and don't, don't, don't let nobody catch you doing it because it might get ugly for you. And, and that's just because it's one big family. Uh, we all love each other. And, you know, I can run into somebody from Knoxville College I may, may not have seen in 15 years. And it's just like we saw each other yesterday. Wow. Because the conversations pick right up. You know, we always have two or three stories to, man, you remember this? And it was crazy. I left um, <clears throat> San Antonio a couple weeks ago from the coaches convention. And I was in line with a couple of the coaches. Actually, Jerry Mack. We were standing in line. Y'all old, Central's old coach. I'm going to say Coach Mack. Yeah. See, I, I knew Jerry when he was playing. So I've been, I, I've been like, one of his mentors for a long time. Okay. Um, we were standing in line to get some breakfast and I th this lady walked up to me and she said, can you pull your mask down? So I'm like, the hell? <laughs> so I, you know, I'm looking and she's like, Terry Sims. It was uh, Teresa, I can't remember her last name, Jason. She was from uh, Illinois. Yeah. She lives in Texas now. She was flying through. Oh, okay. So we were just sitting there <laughs> talking, passing the time. I was like, damn, you run into people from Knoxville College everywhere. It wasn't a lot of us, but it's yeah, we all over the place. All over the place. That's wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. Doc, so look, uh, Sims, so look, we, we always have, I guess, give uh, a, 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 a word of uh, well, hold on, Jason. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Did we say we were done? No. Right. Like, <laughs> I didn't know. My bad. My he bad. always, he always quick on his 
trigger. Hey man, call me Just, quick draw. Get you, get you a ice cold glass <laughs> of. Wait a minute. Mm -mm, I can't say the word. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the, Go, go ahead, go ahead, Sharice. You got a question? I have another question, but I felt like that the conversation just wasn't ending right there. I felt like hey, it was man, something else bad. coming. My <laughs> bad. <clears throat> my oh, man. I don't even know what to say, man. Michael, you got any other questions? Because Jason ready to go. Are, I'm, are you I'm watching the All-Star game, Jason? Saying. I'm just, I, I mean, look. the Pro Bowl game or whatever it's called. The Pro Bowl? Yeah. You watching that? No, I'm not watching that. Oh, okay. Who you got the Super Bowl, Sam? Yeah. Hey man. Why you you betting on the game? If you got money, I bet. If I got money. If you got money, I bet. You know, I I, I yeah. take both money now. I'm taking the home team. That's the Rams. I'm taking the home team. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, hey, you got Jason. I agree with you. Oh. Man, I'm a Houston Texans fan. I don't really care who wins, to be honest with you. But That's they, still you play, they still play football? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we had a rough year this year. We had a rough year this year. I think that too. I can't talk. Yeah. Oh, what man. team? The Giants. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. 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 We've been going through it for a while. Yeah. 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 They, 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 they got to get it right, though. Maybe Brian will help him. Maybe this this will be their their lick. <laughs> yeah, this will be their year again. See, I, I'm Maybe. not. I'm I'm one of those people. I I root for the Falcons, but I'm not gonna just be a Falcons fan because I'm from Georgia. Mm -hmm. My team is the Steelers. Have have been my team since I was eight. So, you know, I'm I'm not gonna ever say I'm just a Falcons fan. So how you be a Steelers playing, fan from Atlanta? I mean, from Georgia. You know. I, I really don't know how it started. Like I said, I have pictures when I was eight, starting when I was eight. I had the whole little outfit, the hat with the little ball on it, the scarf yeah. and the little letterman jackets they used to have, had all that, had all that. And maybe because it was the same colors as my high school, I don't know. Gotcha. But I can tell you anybody who played on that team back then and all of that good stuff and been following them for years. Dig it, dig it. Just what it is. You couldn't have been a, a Texas fan for long. Hell, they ain't had a team that long. We had the Oilers, bro. What you talking about? Oh, so you? But that's not the same team. No, it's not. The, when, the Oilers when, are in Tennessee now. When they and when they left, I stopped rooting for. I stopped rooting for them. <laughs> I ain't had no team. <laughs> so for a while, I didn't. Root I'm just for that. saying. I'm just I didn't. Saying, root, I didn't watch the NFL when they, when, the, when Houston when there wasn't no team in Houston. I let it go. When they came back, I was a Texans fan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, just let hey li listen. Everybody, everybody has some type of pain. When I come into Florida, I cut across like right as soon as like I don't even drive all the way down to Daytona. Okay. okay. Like, you you cut, come across. Mm-hmm. So I go through starts and like right at the top. Mm-hmm. Out there where they where, where they hanging people. Yeah, the prison, all this death row prison, all that stuff. Mm hmm. Okay, yep. I'm back. I'm, I made it. How do you move a car? Why, why didn't you move the car earlier? So, man, here's the, here's the story. I had a whole list of stuff to do when I got back home from church. And then when I, when I got home, I, uh, I took a Didn't nap. Didn't do none of it. Didn't do And I took a nap. And so See, all that stuff I had to get done. But but I, I didn't do any of that. You know why? Because I knew I had this to do. Mm. I did every, it, it wasn't about just getting home from church and doing that. I cooked. You cooked? Yeah. You're such a great guy, Terry Sims. Listen, but what I'm saying is, <laughs> if you have things to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that just means your ass getting old. You, like you, you, you had to take a nap. Bro, I had to take a nap, dog. I, can't, I, I had to do it. I couldn't. Uh, I was trying to, I was trying to fight through the sleeping. Body was like, go lay down. I was like, all right, then. I laid down, it was over. I, I had my phone by me to make sure I didn't oversleep. I had to start the call, start the Zoom. Let's well, are we gonna go. hit record so we can finish the interview? I'm recording. I'm, I'm recording. recording. Yeah, I'm recording. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, I've been recording. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay.
Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been recording. Y'all was talking about I-4 and all that. That jump is going to be weird because he hit it when you was talking about driving or I-4 or whatever. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So it's going to be like uh, a weird cut. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to edit that out? Yeah, yeah. So I could, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, hey man, I had to go, you know, I had to say that, you know. So, so Michael, did you ever say your pick for this the game? Oh, yeah, uh, Rams, Rams, definitely. Okay. You know, I, I'm gonna take if I have to bet, I'm gonna take uh I'm gonna take Cincinnati. Oh man, you do that. Yeah, hey, I'm oh, man. now I'm we'll not a Cincinnati fan. However, I think Joe Burrows plays great under uh in, in pressure situations. And mm-hmm. I think the Kansas City secondary is, t- is terrible. No, I'm sorry. I think the, I think the Rams secondary is good enough, but I don't think the Rams secondary is going to do uh, any better than what the, the, chief, the chief secondary did. I think Jalen Ramsey but, is great, but 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 the Rams front four is better than the Chiefs front four. I give you that. I give you that. I, I know. I give you that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I mean, if you have a nice little wager you want to put on it, let's do it. Hey man, Just I got light you. on yourself. What you want to bet? Make it light oh, on yourself, baby. I, hey man, I, I'm hey. I I will take Xavier. I'll take Sierra and Xavier the lunch money, man. Hey, because I'm I'm gonna get it. Yeah. Oh boy. I'm just saying. You still talking? You hadn't said. I'm just anything saying. Yet. See, I told you you should have went. To, you should have gone to law school a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I got you. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Whatever you want to put on it, man. Let's do it. My zeros ain't as big as your zeros, but I'm. Let's let's do it. But, listen, but you got a zero though. That's, got you, a only, zero. you only need one of them. Uh-uh, I got I got two of mine. I got oh, okay. two with a number with a number with, with, a left, with, the, with a number in front. I'm trying to figure out if it's gonna be one or two. You know, I ain't going higher than two. I just don't want I just don't want you to make me have to come to Durham to collect. We <laughs> 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 gotta, gotta travel to get it. Yeah, because it, it's going to be ugly if I have to come all the way to North Carolina. <laughs> I'm just saying, dog. Hey, you got to visit? No. It's not going to be a visit. <laughs> it's going to be a clinic. I'm coming, I'm coming strictly on business. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, look. I pay my debts if I lose. I'm just saying. Hey, Jason. It's me you're talking to now. Hey, man, I pay I pay my debts. I may not, I may not pay on time, but I pay. Since you want to talk about stories. No, I really don't. No, hey, man, I paid. So first thing first. <laughs> you you, want, you want to talk about that? I paid that. I paid that. So you no, can tell I'm, the story. I'm talking about the whole story. You talking about this when we drove the chat? Yeah, when well, you wrecked my car. So first, so first things first. <laughs> Technically, I didn't wreck it. <laughs> it was hey. the summertime, but I paid it. No, but I'm, I'm talking about how the whole thing happened. But tell the story. I'm ready. Okay, here. Was, we're we're coming back you know. from, from yeah, uh, UTC. We're driving back from Chattanooga. Everybody's tired. Well, we were a little bit more than tired. We were. You were very inebriated. tired. Yeah. But uh, Jason was good. He said he was good. Yeah. He. I had a I had a green Jetta at the time. He jumped in the driver's seat. Said, "I got it." We're driving back to Knoxville. And all we hear is a doo, 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 and everybody jump up like, "What's going on?" Jason says, "One of those things over on the side of the road hit your mirror." <laughs> what, what, the, what do you mean it hit my mirror? These poles are stationary. So he tells us the pole hit the mirror. Oh, reached out, hit the mirror, man. Right, which he ran off the road and hit the poles. I did and tore up the mirror. I did, and all he kept saying, "Dog, I'm gonna pay you back. I pay you back. I pay you back." Yeah, I pay you back. I did. I did. Everybody at school was mad. It it, it, it was that summer, but you did. Yeah, everybody at school was mad. Now, now here's the part of the story he's not gonna tell. Did you get the mirror fixed? Oh yeah. No, you didn't. Not 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 with that money. Not that time. Thank you. I got it fixed eventually, but yeah. not with that. It was summertime. Boy, you know how broke I was that summer. I ain't talking about no, no side mirror. Well, I had I was trying to survive with that little sixty dollars or whatever it was. I was man. trying to make that work. Man, like that little man, like I worked all summer. I worked uh, I worked hard them two weeks to get that money to send you. 
So, like, look, Jason, like my first so you I have see. stories where you work this summer to take care of stuff. Because what was the other story? Was it uh, um, the, um, the 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 furniture set? The furniture, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was yeah. The furniture for that, your girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> hey man, this that boy here, trust me, he all he got plenty of those stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was next year. Yeah. Hey man, Jason Redman. Hey man, I had to go to work, man. I had to go get. They it. only made one. Not That's my dude, row. but they they made one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't many more of me. Like, ain't no more like me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, thank you. It's been, woo. And it's been, it's been a ride. Hey, so, <clears throat> so like you said, 15 oh, years, Jim, and then it's a wrap. So, like, what be your in, in 15 years? What would be your goal to have had, to have have accomplished in those 15 years before you hang it up? He'll be living. Okay. That's my ultimate goal, to be alive. <laughs> be alive. I, I, I think everything else, man, honestly, will take care of itself, the, the, the success. Um, I will look at every year that I have. I have had two seasons that were not. I've only had two losing seasons, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in my head coaching career. Um, I know that'll come, but I still look at every year as a, as a success as long as I have young men that are walking across the stage and getting their degrees and they have had a, a, a positive college experience, mm -hmm. you know, academically, athletically, and socially, they have an opportunity to go and be positive, productive citizens. And that that's something that I always look at as a win. So as long as I can keep doing that, I'll look at every year as being a success. And yeah, yeah. that came straight from Knoxville College. Yeah, I heard that before. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, so that's what you and we have a losing season. That's kind of what you 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 find the positive in that season to hang your hat on. Hey, give you lemons, baby. You got to make lemonade. I can dig it. I can dig it. I can dig it. I can dig it. Okay, all right. I'm going any? back to school so I can be a GA at the thing cooking. Hey, come on, they say I'm crazy, but you can come on. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I'm about to change career paths. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, on down, go on down and work with Coach Sims. Yeah. I had two parents say that two weeks ago in, in the in um on the official visit. One of the dads and it was one of the moms were like, Coach, can we work for you? After I spoke to the group, like, I think I want to work for you. I was like, Yeah, it ain't this recruiting the whole time now. So y'all might not want to work for me. <laughs> 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 I'm a little different dude now when 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 things have to be done. You look, so you, they, they, you have no problem firing people. No. And it gives you a day and a half to clear out your office. Yeah. yeah. Whole day and a half. Whole day and a half. But but you if that happens, most of those people you see the writing on the wall. Mm -hmm. mm. So you should already be cleaning your stuff out. Yeah, don't pack, <laughs> don't pack too much stuff in your office, Pim. Dang. Man, so what, what's your favorite position group to coach? Because you don't really, you don't coach any positions right now. You just oversee everything. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm still, I'm a secondary guy at heart. Uh, still love that. If I ever had to be a position coach again, it, it, that it would be, you know, secondary. Uh, didn't mind coaching running backs; it was okay. But secondary is where my heart is in special teams. Anything on special teams, the whole special teams unit. Mm -hmm. um, that's where I, I cut my teeth also in coaching special teams, you know, have actually gotten me two jobs. So uh, that's something that I, I would always enjoy doing. I think I will always enjoy doing and mm -hmm. always have my hand in it in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Dig it. Dig it. But you play running back. And then you say – um A little bit. Then you say uh, y'all frat brother uh, coach y'all secondary? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, where so is you a little bit harder on him uh, since he um, coaching, you know your favorite. Well, the, the the funny thing about it is, you know, we we <clears> it's <throat> a little running joke right here that the, the coaches mess with him about it. They said, "Well, you coaching him, but you played behind Coach Sims. So, what what does that mean <laughs> when y'all in school? He hate that." But uh, and, and I always tell people I, I had to move to safety so he could play. Um, so we have we have fun with it, but he he's a great football coach. Uh, I don't have a whole lot to say to him. You know, he actually calls me over with his group more than I go over uh, just to 
you know, go over things with him. And funny thing is he, I, he uses me. He tries to tell me that, you know, he just want me to come over and help, but he uses me to throw these guys a whole lot. Uh, yeah, he can't throw. And, 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 right. <laughs> and, and, you know, that, that's, that's, that's something because his hands are smaller. <laughs> yeah. and, and, he, and, and he hate that but yeah. you know i go over because i'm i'm gonna bump for him until they put us in the ground so mm -hmm. i gotta I, I gotta be there and i gotta do what i have to do and i enjoy it because it gives me an opportunity on certain days to go over and interact with the guys and you know that's something that i really really enjoy do you do you even get in, do you get involved in the offense at all oh yeah oh yeah mm -hmm. okay oh yeah have to. I mean, I'm I'm really with both with all three phases of the game. I really get them. You know, I, I sit in on their meetings. Let me know what you're doing. If I have something to say about it, I say it. If it looks like you got a good plan together, I keep my mouth closed. Because I I have been you know on a couple of staffs where the head coach was a micromanager, and I let my coaches coach. Mm -hmm. If I have to coach your position, then I don't need you. Right. I can dig it. And that, that's how I feel about it. So look, man, with, with the uh, with Dion coming to the to Jack, going to Jackson State, man, what what have you seen different in HBCU football since he's been there? I mean, or, we're, or have we're you seen a, the difference? Uh, the the difference I would say is uh, we're we're on, we're on a few more, or we're the the visibility, mm -hmm. the, the, the publicity in certain areas. I mean, HBCU football. Since I have been here at Bethune Cookman, I mean, we average, you know, five or six games a year on TV. Mm -hmm. So we we're the exposure is there for us. We have been there, but I think you know he has added a, a different level uh, of exposure uh, to this league and and to HBCU football. Period. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the coaches, uh, I, I actually spoke to a lot of the HBCU coaches uh, a couple weeks ago. We all met. Everybody just needs to understand, ride the wave and, and take away what you can take away that works for your program. Everybody's not going to be able to do everything that they do because a lot of the stuff that they're doing costs money and a lot of people are giving that stuff to him. Mm -hmm. And that's just because of who he is. And you have to understand that. But I don't dislike anything about what he's doing. I'm not hating on anything he's doing. I think it's great because it's given kids an opportunity to, to uh, showcase their skills on, a, on a, di a different stage, a bigger stage. So I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. We have benefited, you know, we, from a, a few of the things that they're doing. Uh, and we're going to continue to benefit from things that work for us. And I think that's what the smart coaches are doing. They're taking away the things that work for them and not, you know, wasting time and spending time talking about what he's doing. And it's crazy. They hired him. and all. For what? Like, you're if you're doing all that complaining, you're not working. Right. And, and I'm just not, I mean, you know that about me. I'm not a complainer. I'm not a guy that's going to sit and waste time. We're going to work. We're going to get it done. If you want to, you know, gripe and bitch and moan about what's going on over there, go do it somewhere else. But we're right. not going to do it here. Um, and, and we have a, a, a lot of the coaches that have bought into that and, and understand what it's about, mm -hmm. you know. And and I every, every time I have a conversation with, with, with Dion, it's a positive conversation. And, and he is truly, um, you know, people say, well, he's doing it for the pub, for himself or whatever. If, if he is, you can't tell it by the one-on-one -on -one conversations because he is doing a whole lot to try to, to, to enhance HBCU football. And, you know, like I said, the, guy, the ones of us that are, I think are smart are using it and, and, and using it for what it's worth, for what works for your program and keep moving. Dig it, dig it. So uh, we're going to go through the time. Summer. Now's the time, Jason. Oh, we, I can't. OK. Now's the time? Yeah, now's the time. Oh, OK. OK. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So uh, since I've been told by my great co-host, Ms. Lovett, uh, so Sims, <clears throat> every week we give our, uh, we get our guests to give us a word of encouragement for the, for the fans, for the podcast watchers. To stick to, to have something to hang their hat on, so give us give us like a little word of encouragement or a little word that people can hang their hat on for this week that they can go by and say, Coach Sims said, and this is what's going to happen for me this week. Bam. 
Give us a little word, Terry. Always believe in you, always bet on you. Work to be the change that you want to see in the world. Dang, quick. Always be positive, baby. You need me to, you need me to write that down for you? No. No, I, 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 mean, I can write it on the screen. I mean, in the in the little text. Chat, yeah, no. <laughs> Thank you, though. Thank you. Just saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Profound word there, brother. Real quick, too. Yes. Yeah. Facts. It, 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 it don't take a whole lot of words. Like when people sit and they keep going on and on and on, yeah. really they, they don't they don't have a base. They don't really believe what they're saying. It don't take a whole lot of words. They're trying to convince themselves. <laughs> and and I, it, I I use another <laughs> term for that. They they mind beat themselves. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got a beep? <laughs> you got the same beep button. You got the sensor, you got the sensor quiz over there with you. Hey, okay. Hey, look, man, I really appreciate you coming on and 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 gracing gracing the folks with your uh with your wisdom and information and telling your story, man. I really do appreciate it. I, I did not know the Albany State story. That that has to be the funniest thing I've ever heard. Uh, you know. Which is and I laugh because my my 17-year-old son had been banned from the state of Maryland for a year. The, like the entire state. I was like, God dang. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, no. it's real. The struggle is real now. Yeah, the, they give the, you a nice little letter, too. Nice letter here. <laughs> Good paper. Yeah. I, I have never heard that story before. I, you have brought comedy to my day. Uh, uh, I, 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 I keep yeah. that story buried. Hey, Amen. I said, yeah. Thanks for sharing it with us today, though. Yeah, thanks for sharing, Sam. That's really, I really appreciate it. So my daughter's gonna be excited to see you on the show because she loves Terry. So oh, I got I got to give I got something to give her too. She she probably oh don't worry, I'm gonna send you my information too. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm a very free-hearted person. Yeah, yeah, he is. You better be free with this money. I'm gonna I'm gonna take from you on, on the when the bang from the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Yeah. Hey Jason. I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna call you and tell you what we're gonna bet too. You were gonna call anyway. <laughs> you know, hey, I call you, I call y'all all the time. Yeah. I, I told him why you yeah, were going that. Yeah, yeah, he told us. He told us. Yeah. <laughs> I call all my guys all the time. Now, whether they answer the phone or not. So if anybody asks me about Terry, they say, hey man, you, uh, you got Terry number. I'm like, yo, I give you his number, but you go, you might want to text him because he's not gonna answer his phone. Yeah. So if you text him, he'll text you back. If you don't. If you just call him out the rip, he's not gonna answer. So, yeah. So I've learned to text him. Yeah. So. That's funny. Hey, man. Yeah. Yeah. He talk bad about me all the time, but it's okay. It don't bother me. It's all love, brother. Hey. Hey. I know when I go to Daytona, I can stay at his house. So I'm I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, we know. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Damn right. Yeah. And, and uh, I I just poured the, the rest of that, that mess you had out the other day. You poured out the Jameson? I don't drink no coffee liquor, man. Man, that thing was great, bro. You crazy? No. Yeah, you your, your, your taste buds. You need to go see a doctor. You man. mixing Jameson with coffee? So it was called it's Jameson a, Cold Brew. It's a co- cold brew. Jameson. It's like a Kahlua, right? No, nah, it's liquor. It wasn't, it wasn't a Kahlua. It was just, it was just you get some Bailey's. Um, no, it wasn't, it wasn't in the Bailey's. If, I, if I'm drinking Jameson, this is going to be James. James, I right. need no cold brew and all that Man, mess. Cold, <laughs> hey, Michael, the cold brew was great. I don't know what Terry's talking about. That thing was fire. It was del- delicioso. Yeah. Didn't need to chase it out. Anything. Yeah, it was good. Oh, it's smooth like that. Woo, yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't know what's wrong with Terry's, Terry's palate, but you know. It's, it's okay. It's all right. As soon as I close this out, <laughs> I, I, I delayed. I delayed my 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 Sunday activity. Just from just for me, I appreciate that, bro. Oh, I feel the love. I feel. Now love. I got to do what I got to do, so yeah. I'll be ready for work tomorrow. We appreciate you. We appreciate you coming. We appreciate you coming on. What man. what what does that shirt say? To be a real woman, what? To be a real woman is to be an eagle. Okay. That's for your college. Yes. Okay. Okay. All All righty.
<laughs> All right. So, so what y'all doing? That's a pigeon. I don't know what they do. That's what, I, that's what they do when we come down there to play. They be in the stands. <laughs> yeah, they don't do that no more because you ain't, ain't come back down. Y'all going to play them again this year? Or next year? For what? Uh, y'all play because y'all played South Carolina State last year. Yeah, we still have a, a four year contract with them, so we got we have three more years. We got to play them a contract. Trey don't want to do that. Trey, Trey don't want Trey good. He don't want. <laughs> he don't, don't want to do that. He don't want to smoke. Look, he he brings Edwards College up. Yeah, Edwards Water. Exactly. Water. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And it's usually for homecoming. <laughs> they tried that one time when, when Frazier was there bringing us up there for homecoming. Okay. <laughs> never say never again. Oh, no, nah, they ain't do that no more. Yeah, so they ain't doing that. Not for homecoming. <laughs> nope. I think the last time y'all played them, you beat them on that last second touchdown. Mm-hmm. We don't beat them a couple times. I mean, every time we play Central, it's a good game. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah. But we usually either score right at the last second or block a field goal or do something to, you know. Yeah. To deflate us. <laughs> it's no better feeling than to force your will on another man. You move another man against his will, it's no better feeling. And look in his eyes and you see he can't do nothing about it. Mm. Make you feel a little different. <laughs> Make me a little different. <laughs> See, I told you, I'm, 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 I'm touched a little bit now. I mean, hey I'm, man, you ain't gotta tell me. I, just, <laughs> I understand. Oh <laughs> uh, uh, man! All right, Michael, you take us out of here, man. Go ahead. <laughs> Ready? Yeah, yeah go All ahead. Right. Please like if well if you haven't yet, please like, subscribe, and continue to follow us on this journey. If you've been rocking with us so far, please keep on keeping on because we have a lot more amazing episodes to come. I'd like to thank my two amazing co-hosts, the lovely Ms. Sharice Lovett and Mr. Jason Redman. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. All right. And I'd like to thank our amazing guest host, um, Coach Sims. Um, it's been a pleasure hearing your story, uh, hearing about the the, the mentality you've developed over the years. Uh, it's been great having you on the show. I just appreciate you uh, coming on and blessing us with your presence. <laughs> We're DTR Incorporated, a nonprofit organization geared toward uplifting, inspiring, and empowering communities all over the world. And remember, our goal is not to be better than anybody, but together we can achieve better for everybody. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. Thanks. Good night. Good night. So we're going to try to segue all those things into that regarding that. Um, uh, you know, they knew what fraternities you were in. I definitely mean, it was wasn't an easy decision. Uh, you know, I sat down with my dad.